So organic chemistry is essentially the study of covalent bonds. And covalent bonds are formed by the overlap of atomic orbitals. And that means in order to understand what covalent bonds are, we must first understand what atomic orbitals are. So let's begin. So here we have, <clears throat> so here we have Bohr's model. Now Bohr's model is essentially a depiction of the nucleus, the protons found in the nucleus, and the electrons found orbiting our nucleus. Now according to the Bohr's model, and for this particular atom, our electrons are orbiting in a perfect circle. So for this atom we have two electrons found in this circle, and two electrons found in the outer circular orbit. Now, as you may or may not know, Bohr's model is actually an inaccurate depiction of our atomic nucleus and the electrons. And that's because electrons do not actually occupy these perfect or circular and spherical orbits. Now, Schrodinger described the pathway that our electrons follow using wave equations. So, in other words, our electrons follow certain orbits, certain pathways that are not circular. And what this person did is he described the pathways that they take using wave equations. Now, wave equations are simply mathematical representations of the pathways that our electrons do take. And just like any simple equation, we can also solve wave equations for solutions. And the solutions to these wave equations are called wave functions. Now, orbitals are the same thing as wave functions. So orbitals are wave functions, so orbitals are solutions to these wave equations. And since wave equations are simply mathema mathematical representations of the pathways that electrons take, if we solve these wave equations, we can find the probability of an electron being at a certain region, in a, in a certain volume. And these probabilities are given by orbitals. So orbitals represent certain shapes or volumes within which our electrons are most likely in. The reason I say most likely is because orbitals are probabilities. Now, before we talk more about orbitals, let's recall what quantum numbers are. Quantum numbers are simply the ID of our electrons. So, if we have a unique electron in a given atom, that electron has four unique quantum numbers that are unique to that electron. So, we have the principal quantum number, we have the azimuthal quantum number, and we have two more quantum numbers. Now, the principal quantum number gives the energy level of that electron. The second quantum number, known as the azimuthal quantum number, gives or designates the shape of the orbital, and it's represented by the letter L, and it could be 0, 1, 2, and so on, 0 being the S shape, 1 being the P shape, 2 being the D shape. The third quantum number specifies exactly which orbital that our electron is in, and a fourth quantum number uh, gives the spin, electron spin, of our electron. So we could have either a plus one-half spin or a minus one-half spin. So, in this lecture, we're only going to deal with the S or the P orbital. So let's begin with the S orbital. So the S orbital, which is one of the solutions to the wave equations, is given by the spherical shape. So, this sphere is the S orbital, and what it basically states is that our electron is most likely in this sphere here. Now, of course, since we're talking about probabilities, there is still a probability that our electron will be found outside this spherical shape, but it's very unlikely, and that's why we say it's most likely in this orbital. So, the p orbital, unlike the s orbital, have a dumbbell-like shape, or sideways 8. Now, we have the px orbital, we have the py orbital, and the pz orbital. In other words, if we label this as the x-axis, this as the y-axis, and this as the z-axis, so z-axis is coming out of the board, or going into the board, then we have the following three orbitals. 
Now, if we take these guys and put them together, we get the overall p orbital. And it's given by the following picture, which kind of looks like a flower, a three-dimensional flower. Now we have the x orbital, so this guy here. We have the y orbital, so this guy here. And we have this z orbital, the pz orbital, which is coming out of the board. Now, just like on the x, y, z axis, we have the positive side. So y going this way is positive, x going this way is positive, and z going out of the board is positive. We also have the positive sides or positive probabilities of the orbitals. So this green part is the positive and the blue part is the negative. Now, because we're dealing with waves and waves have nodes and anti-nodes, these guys will also have nodes and anti-nodes. Now, the nodes are these guys here. So if you could think of the eight, and the eight intersects at this point, this point is the node. And what it basically states is that our electron has a zero probability of being in this place. So the node means zero probability of finding an electron at this place. That means we're never gonna find an electron here, here, or here, or in the cumulative picture, we're never gonna find the electron at the origin, at the point zero, zero on this x, y, z axis. So, why are these guys important? How can we use these guys to represent pictures of our atoms, okay? So let's take an example. Let's take the carbon atom. So carbon, a neutral carbon, has six protons, hence this subscript uh, six, and six electrons. So that means, if we were to draw our electron configuration, we would get this depiction. So, two electrons go into this 1s, two electrons go into this 2s, and two electrons go into this picture here. But remember, we have to follow the Pauli exclusion principle, which basically states that a maximum of two electrons can be placed into any orbital. So two electrons can be placed into the s, two electrons each can be placed into the px, py, and pz. So cumulatively, we're going to have a total, a maximum of six electrons that can be placed into this flower-shaped p orbital because this actually includes three separate orbitals so two can be placed in here into here and into here now also recall Hund's rule Hund's rule basically states that before we begin completely filling these orbitals we first have to place one electron here one electron here and one electron here so we have to go in order and that's exactly what we do here. One electron is placed into the px, and one electron is placed into the py. And that's exactly what we do here. So, let's look at what happens. So, the electrons are the brown dots. I used brown because we already used blue, and I don't want to um, confuse you guys further. So, the blue or the brown are our electrons. So, the 1s orbital I did not depict, and that's because the 1s orbital is simply a smaller black sphere found within this 2s sphere. This uh, black sphere here is the 2s sphere. So let's imagine that we took our two electrons and placed it into our 1s, and now we're taking our two electrons and placing it into the 2s. So the 2s is this black sphere here, and I took two electrons and placed it into the black sphere as shown here. Now I have one electron that I placed into the X, so the uh, uh, green region, and one electron that I placed into the Y region, so the Y orbital, or the green part of the Y orbital. And that's the picture or depiction using atomic orbitals of our carbon. Now, we'll see in later lectures how when these guys interact with other orbitals, with other atoms, they form something called covalent bonds. Now, let's look at neon. Now, neon has 10 
uh, protons and 10 electrons. In fact, it has a perfect electron configuration. It's a noble gas. So all the electron, all the atomic orbitals should be filled. So let's look at our electron configuration. So we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p x2, 2p y2, and 2p z2. So once again, two electrons go into the 1s, which isn't shown. Two electrons go into the 2s, which is shown. And we, here we have two electrons. Two electrons go into our x orbital. Two electrons go into the 2p y orbital. And two electrons go into the 2p z orbital. So all the orbitals, all the, all the green orbitals are filled. And so this is our atomic orbital representation of our neon in which it has a perfect electron configuration, all our orbitals are filled.